early summer 2021, they diagnosed my dad's cancer, pancreatic cancer, terminal pancreatic cancer. Now, two months later, we're at the hospital because my dad is in nonstop pain and puking. A bald, disheveled doctor comes whooshing in with my dad's scan. He's throwing medical jargon around, uh, duodenum this, mesenteric that. My head is spinning. He pulls up the images and finally gets to the point. My dad has a malignant bowel obstruction. Surgery's the only way to fix it, and yet, surgery's not an option. He's too sick. And my dad looks at me. So that's it, then. I'm, I'm a goner. I'm holding eye contact with him. Uh, I have 20 years as a social worker in the death and dying field. I know the answer, and my dad knows that I know the answer. And I let my eyes speak gently before responding, yeah. The doctor says my dad only has a few days to live. Suddenly, I'm free-falling and hitting every branch coming down. But the free-fall doesn't last for long, though. You see, I snap back into the moment. There's this part of me that activates for crisis moments like these uh, kick-ass, ass-names-later part. <laughs> kick-ass, Chris. <laughs> Come on, focus. <laughs> you know how to do this. So, uh, Dad, where do you want to be at the end? And at home? At the hospital? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever's easiest. This answer is so frustratingly my dad. Wishy-washy, unclear, no guidance on what he really wants. Reminds me of all the times we'd ask my dad, what he wants for Christmas? Socks and underwear. <laughs> Just give me socks and underwear. My dad's denial of himself, his needs, uh, his feelings is rooted in growing up in extreme trauma. Alcoholism, violence. At 18, his mom died in a fall during a vicious spousal clash. And shortly after, his dad killed himself in a garage cloud of carbon monoxide. He had to identify the body. My dad subscribed to the Grin and Barrett School of Trauma Recovery, the classic workaholic-alcoholic combo, disappearing from my life physically and emotionally. Stinging self-doubt followed me moment to moment, place to place, leaving me feeling aimless and alone. It was from this gaping void, the absence of fathery fatherly guidance from which Kick-Ass Chris was born. Kick-Ass Chris took decisive action, getting a job at 14, telling toxic assholes to fuck off, <laughs> and leaving the house during the screaming chaos of my parents' divorce. He got me through, often at the expense of asking for help when I needed it. Help? That's just another word for people getting in the way. All these dynamics raining down on me in my dad's hospital room. I'm not sure I've got the energy to pull out of my dad what he actually wants. You know, where he wants to take his last breaths. I mean, this ain't the same as trying to get him to tell me where he wants to go for birthday dinner. Just say it out back. You want the New York Strip? <laughs> There's one more Stinging irritant. Yeah, I've got 20 years in the death and dying field, but I've actually never done it. You know, the thing, the bring them home caregiver thing. So if my dad's not going to decide, I ask myself, well, what do I want? Where do I want my dad to die? I mean, I've witnessed some absolutely beautiful transcendent deaths at home. Even though I tell people, 
can't promise smooth sailing. Against this backdrop, I decide it's time to earn my hospice street cred and chase a beautiful death for my dad, for me and my family. I decide I'm going to do it. <laughs> the paramedics wheel my dad into the living room where the hospital bed's set up. My dad's in and out of it. He's not speaking. It's like he's here, but not here. My brother and stepmom are here as well, making it clear they won't be able to do the dirty work. Wish they'd buck up. That's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> I mean, I'm not convinced I'm going to be able to, you know, get up close and personal with my dad's mm, private areas. <laughs> The hospice nurse arrives. He gives me a crash course on caregiving, diapering, set up a trash bag, get your wipes. I'm, tr I'm trying to listen. <laughs> Old diaper in the trash, new diaper here, get the pad there. He gets my dad settled and leaves. It's midnight. I dim the lights, lay down on the couch next to the bed, hoping to get some rest and close my eyes. 1213, my dad isn't sleeping. He's completely out of it grunting, tearing at his gown, talking nonsense. I get up and see he's managed to unfasten one side of his diaper, and I can see through the dim a, a dark stain on the underpad. Fuck! It hasn't even been a half hour since the hospice nurse left. I mean, I am so scared of fucking this up. I mean, <laughs> I turn on the light to survey the situation. It's bad, like real bad. Uh, the dark stain, it's actually black. Or maybe just the darkest green I've ever seen. It looks nothing like what I expected, and it's liquid. I mean, black diarrhea? And the smell, oh God, rising up, pungent and angry and, and sh just freakish, just wrong. I mean, I feel frozen. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The nurse told me what to do. Gloves on, check. Trash bag, wipes, check. Fresh diaper, check. I push my dad onto his side and just start wiping. The green-black liquid is everywhere on his behind and up his back. And I'm just startled by the warmth and viscosity of this, this unholy discharge. But I just keep wiping and wiping and wiping. And five wipes later, I've got it all. Well, all off his backside. Up to this point, I've avoided eye contact with my dad's privates. I don't want to. I don't want to. Ah, uh, Grab a wipe. Grab a wipe. Hey, okay, <laughs> kind of squinting and wiping. I do the deed, get the diaper on him, and voila! Finally, my dad is clean and changed. I'm so, I'm so thankful that my dad is in the throes of delirium and not aware of what just went down. I think he'd be mortified. He told me he didn't want to be a burden. Self-doubt starts creeping in. Start to question my decision. Worry I've put us both in a bad spot. Him losing his dignity. Me biting off more than I can chew. My dad seems to be settling down some. I dim the lights. Lay back down on the couch. 1244. My dad starts talking and moving again. I get up to try to calm him. Suddenly, it, it hits me, the, the smell, the freakish smell. No! What? It's been 10 minutes! How is this possible? Well, maybe it's just gas. Nope, nope, definitely not gas. Definitely not gas. I haven't been a caregiver for an hour, and I'm feeling like throwing in the towel. And I'm wondering, how do people do this? And then I start feeling regret for all my years of encouraging families to do this. 
without really knowing what I was signing them up for. Wish I could go back in time, warn them. Things may get uh, very mm, messy. I thought I knew what being a caregiver felt like. I mean, I thought I knew. I didn't know. But I dive headlong into the whole diaper changer routine, get it done. 116, lay down to sleep once more. 131, my dad soiled again. Again! 218, 254, 327, again and again and again. It, it just won't stop. I'm not at the end of my rope. More like laying on my broken back at the bottom of a pit, <laughs> staring at the frayed ends of the rope I've fallen from. I'm toast, like crispy, burned, smelly toast. <sighs> this is not what my dad wanted. And as much as I wanted to prove myself as a caregiver, this is not what I wanted either. Not this. I'm talking to myself now. Ugh, I can't do this. I should call hospice. Seriously? Already? This is what you signed up for. I cannot tell you how many times I've told families about the hospice 24-hour hotline. I mean, the ultimate phone a friend. Yet here I am, wringing my hands about calling. I mean, I really need to call. This isn't the first time in my life I need to negotiate with kick-ass Chris. 25 years of therapy have helped me recognize when he's part of the problem. <laughs> Taking things mm, too far. I mean, there are no do-overs here. This internal negotiation process, this, this conversation with myself, with kick-ass Chris, this... This part of me, it can be mm, tricky. Hey, you know, we need help. Not yet. Let's give it another hour. Remember, can't always go it alone. Shit. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> you got to know. I appreciate you. You're my protector. Yeah. I'm going to call now. Fine. It's 4 a.m. I call hospice. They send out a nurse who manages to get my dad settled and, by extension, get me settled. Sunrise. I decide to hire professional caregivers. First caregiver arrives in the early afternoon. I finally get to sleep. When I wake up, the caregiver tells me my dad is actively dying. I find myself alone with my dad, and I'm sitting in a chair next to his bed, and memories are flooding in. There's long pauses between his breaths. It hits me. My dad is going to die in peace. At home, I did it. And I'm flooded by this all-consuming relief and tears just are streaming and streaming. And, and I'm just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thought I knew what a beautiful death at home felt like. I mean, I, I thought I knew. I, I didn't know. Something else I tell people who are at this phase of the dying process. Sometimes the dying person is waiting for someone to leave. Sometimes they're waiting for someone to come. We never know. Early morning, I was asleep upstairs. My stepmom woke up, went to my dad's side and told him, I love you, Bob. Not five seconds later, my dad took his last breath. 
<laughs> for my dad's last act on this earth, finally, he knew exactly what he wanted. Two months later, my foray into end-of-life caregiving for my dad is behind me. Back to work at the hospital. Some days are definitely tough, especially the patients with pancreatic cancer. One of the patients in particular is going downhill fast, much like my dad did. And our team is meeting with the patient's daughter, helping her make plans. She says, I know my dad is dying. He told us he wants to go home. I just need to know if that's possible. And we tell her, yes, it's definitely possible. Tell her about the support hospice can provide. And yes, she and her family can do it. But I interject. There are uh, a few things you should know. That was Chris Underdunk. Let him hear it.